Well, hi campers, this is Darren with My RV Works, and today we are at Salt Creek RV Park, one of the most beautiful places on the uh, Olympic Peninsula. Uh, behind us there is Canada, and standing right next to me is Jeffrey. He's one of our customers who's come up here to have us look at his refrigerator. So Jeffrey, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on with your refrigerator? Well, we have a, a Norcold 1200, and it's intermittent cooling. It uh, seems to cool fine for a month, and then it starts to warm up. So we un unload the refrigerator, shut it off, let it warm completely up, restart it, and it starts cooling fine. And it's about once a month we've been doing that. And that's, that's pretty much the symptoms. Now, when you turn it off, do you move your refrigerator? Like, do you move your RV anywhere so there's any movement in that refrigerator? Or no. Just, it's been sitting the whole time? It's been sitting the whole time. Okay. It, it, it's pretty much either way. Okay. So, <clears throat> how long has this been happening? Well, this, I've been fighting this thing for about a year. Okay, so, so basically every month, it takes about a month. Do you notice that it starts to degrade at its cooling ability? Yeah. What, what to the I've point been, where it's just not working. What I've been doing is I've been keeping it on the on mode three so I can monitor the fin temperature. Okay, good. And I've been watching that, and it yes, it, it does. It slowly starts creeping up, but we also have a thermometer inside the refrigerator, okay. and so we don't get food poisoning on that yes part of it. that's that's smart and, that's good okay and we just watch it and then when it gets too warm we shut it off let it warm up open the doors let everything warm up and then turn it back on and it's fine for another 30 30 okay. days or so when it's when you letting when you're letting it warm up do you ever come to the back side do you see if there's any moisture dripping off the back have you ever uh, gone to the back side no i haven't i okay. haven't looked at that okay all right um well folks what do you think it could be uh let me ask one more question. Have you checked this on both LP and electric? Yes, I have. And the symptom is the it's, same? Yep, symptoms are the same. In, in fact, uh, we had a power outage and it switched over to LP and the uh, LP, it, it ran for the whole time the the power was off. It never okay. did shut off. So it's it's trying to cool, but it's not it's not getting there. It's, okay. It's not, it's not working out. I have enough information. Right. I think we know what the problem is. Good. So what do you guys think the problem is? So I'll talk a little bit about a thing called blockages, and I'll talk a little bit about an ice dam. Um, so let me let me put this up right here. And um, so here goes Darren's talking part. <laughs> okay. So basically what I understand Jeffrey saying is that cyclically over a month his refrigerator is consistently getting it like on day one it's working great nice and cold no problems right. keeping ice cold and stuff yep. but then over yeah yep yep you're but, right but then over a period of time it's like parabolic where over a period of time it starts to curve where it's getting warmer and warmer in that refrigerator so then you turn it off correct let it thaw itself out open the doors take correct. all your food out and then start it up again and then Yay, we're back to day one again. And then you have that parabolic thing happening again over the next month or so, you know. Give or take. Give or take, give yeah. or take. Um, and it does the same thing on LP and it does the same thing on electric. So here's my, let me get you into my brain. If you are telling me that this does it only on LP, but not on electric, or only on electric and not on LP, then we'd be looking at those systems. And this, I'm staring into the sun. My glasses are like really dark. If you want to see my eyes, here I am, but I can't see you because you're blurry. So somebody made a comment about I shouldn't wear sunglasses when I'm doing this, but they're like $600 prescription sunglasses right. so I can see things and the sun's bright. So I'm sorry if I have sunglasses on, but, uh, but at least I can see you. So, and you can see us. Yeah. Yay, right. All right, yeah. right. So awesome. yeah, anyway, and it's just the sun's bright. I should put my hat on. I should get my hat on. You got a hat. You're smart. So yeah, where, where's my thing? Uh, Seattle, Kraken. Yeah. Ooh, I'm so excited about our new so uh, hockey team. Kraken. I'm a crackhead. Okay. So um, where was I? We're talking about refrigerators. Yeah. The key here is that the problem is consistent with electric and LP. Okay. So therefore, it's not going to be your control board. It's not going to be a fuse. It's not going to be your heating element. It's not going to be your LP pressure. Um, it's not going to be any of those things. The one thing that is consistent with this is the cooling unit itself. Okay. So there are several ways we can test this. Now it turns out that his refrigerator is off right now. 
But a homework assignment for you is if you're having these kinds of symptoms, then what I would want you to do is, is I've got this big fancy 500 meter, uh, $500 uh, thermometer, don't make me a liar. Th uh, okay, it takes an image of a heat signature, okay? Th yeah. Thermal. Thermal imaging thing, yeah. What he said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you would sign on the back. Now what you're looking for is the temperature of your boiler and the temperature of your cooling. And we're gonna go look at all this here. We're gonna be pulling the whole refrigerator out. But you want there to be a similar temperature between those two, okay? So if your boiler's really, really hot and those absorber coils, the things that go round and round are, are not as hot or they're cool, then that tells us that you've lost, uh, no, that tells you have a blockage, okay? If your boiler is not so hot, but your coils are really, really hot, that tells you that you have a leaker. That means that you've lost, um, uh, there's a, you've lost your hydrogen, okay? So you're boiling the ammonia, but there's nowhere for it to boil into. You've lost all your pressure. So the first thing you would look for is, is, a, is a leaker, and you see the leaker because you have yellow sodium chromate on the bottom. I'm gonna make a link to another video over here that um, I go into how heat makes cold because we were talking about refrigerators and my son, Dakota, who's been in a lot of my videos, he's basically said, well, dad, how does, we're always talking about an, a refrigerator being a heating appliance and how these boilers get five, 500, 600, 700 degrees. And uh, he's like, I don't understand how that gets so hot, but my ice cream is cold. And so out of that question, we started a whole new video on how these things work. So I'm not gonna get into that here. Go watch that video if you wanna go into great detail on on the absorption of ammonia, the evaporation of ammonia, why ammonia, why hydrogen, why sodium chromate, that's in that video. So, see, now where was I again? Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Uh, if, we, if we wait long enough, we'll see an eagle, I'm guaranteed, I'm right. guaranteed. Victoria Canada over there. Hey, Victoria, we love you guys. Here's Victoria. If the cruise ships were rolling, we would see cruise ships over there. Well, not now, it's not summertime. It's still February, almost March. Boy, I'm all over the place. So, we were talking about, um, yes. So if you have a leaker, then you would see this yellow sodium chromate powdery type stuff on the bottom of your boiler, okay? And that's a sodium chromate. It's readily absorbable into water. And you could just test that and put some water in there and it should uh, uh, dissolve into that, okay? Um, if you have a blockage, then you would see that because your boiler's really hot, but it's not so hot in your coils. And ergo, blockage, it's not, rotating through, okay? But I think what we would find on Jeffries is that his temperatures would be pretty much consistent, indicating that the cooling unit on the back of the refrigerator is, per is working perfectly. So therefore there's no blockage. Let me talk about blockage for just a second because I do get a lot of comments about blockage and, and um, you know, well the guy down there at the dealership and the RV uh, place, he said to turn the thing upside down and bang on it and that's gonna fix it. Um, that's my, hey, I lived in Virginia, I love you guys, but that's how we talk down there, okay? And I lived in Texas, and I don't got the draw, but I got a little bit of a twang, so. Anyway, I love you guys, it's just fun, we're having fun. So here's the whole thing about taking your refrigerator out, turning it upside down and banging on it. Will that fix your problem? No, that will not fix the problem. And will, by banging on it with a hammer or something, that will not fix the problem, okay? If you have a blockage in your refrigerator, what that means is at some point it operated off level, um, and the sodium chromate that's in there, that's a rust inhibitor. Ammonia is a great element to, to evaporate. It, the evaporation point of ammonia is minus 22, which is where, go back to their video. But that sodium chromate gets so hot and it starts to crystallize. And it's kind of like cholesterol in our, in our lungs and arteries and stuff. So once that crystallizes, it's like burnt toast. It's not gonna uncrystallize, it's not gonna unburn itself. And so you've lost some of that solution because it's become crystallized. And you might have little, little flecks of it floating around inside your cooling unit. And go watch that, I keep referencing that video because it, it, it covers so much. But you have little bitty tubes going into big tubes, going into small tubes. The ammonia changes states from a gas to liquid four times in one cycle. There's two heat exchangers, uh, a liquid heat exchanger and a gas heat exchanger, all in this. So as this sodium chromate floats around and crystallizes, it might get lodged between a big tube and a small tube. And so the whole idea of taking your refrigerator out and turning it upside down, you're just dislodging that blockage. But it's gonna come back um, because the sodium chromate is crystallized. So, make sense? Right. Okay, and, you, and once it's crystallized, you can't sprinkle pixie dust on it and make it go back into solution. It's burned, it's shot, it's gone. 
Um, and then what will eventually happen, depending on how much that crystallization has happened, you've lost some of the, uh, the, the working ability for that sodium chromate to prevent the corrosion that's happening with the ammonia. And so you're looking at a situation where the ammonia is going to start eroding in, uh, the, the, the steel pipes, is what I'm saying. So banging on your cooling unit with a hammer might dislodge these blockages, but they're going to show up again. Turning it upside down might dislodge the blockages, but it might come back again. And maybe banging on it might take a big chunk and break it up into small chunks, but they're just going to come back again. Um, on a blockage, that was my question to Jeffrey, was is, does it make a difference if you drive down the road and, and then it fixes? In his instance, it didn't. Um, so driving down the road would be the same thing as banging on your cooling unit to dislodge that blockage. Okay, so I'm really trying to drive a point home on this whole blockage thing. I don't think you have a blockage. Um, the reason why I don't think he's got a blockage is because when his cooling unit turns off for a couple of days, well, it's it, to, to it, like to defrost it. Yeah, it's like even eight hours. Okay, it's fine. Okay, there's no banging anything, so there's nothing to dislodge. So I hope I've made the point of turning the refrigerator upside down. You might get it to work again, or driving your RV around, you might get it to work again, but you haven't fixed the problem. That's not a fix, that's just a patch uh, because your sodium chromate has crystallized inside and there's big tubes going to small tubes and sooner or later this little fleck that's floating around in here is going to lodge himself into, from a big tube to a small tube. And um, there's no fix for that. Um, you have to replace your entire cooling unit at that point. Um, so there's no, you can't go inside there. You can't recharge them. Uh, it's a sealed pressurized unit. It's got ammonia, hydrogen, water, sodium chromate, pressure, heat, and gravity, all those things working together. So there's no fix for a blockage. Okay. Having said that about blockage, that is not your problem. I don't think. There's something else that happens to these refrigerators where the cooling unit is working perfectly fine, but the refrigerator is starting to warm up. And we call that, in my world, we call that a thing called an ice dam, okay? Now, I've got pictures of ice dams from cooling units that I've replaced, and there's all this ice in there. And I think what we'll do is we'll add those pictures to this video. Um, and my wife, who does all the editing, she'll probably put a couple pictures about right now <laughs> of some of these ice dam pictures that we've done on other refrigerator jobs. Usually, it's hard to catch an ice dam because by the time I get there to work on it, they've got it turned off and all the ice is melted. But I was able to capture some pictures of an ice dam. So let's talk about the ice dam because I think that's what's wrong here. And we're going to take the camera. We're going to show you. We're going to, we're going to fix this. So under, follow with me on this. We're going to follow the trail. Okay. So if you've watched, I've got another video. I'll link to it on how to replace a cooling unit. Okay. And um, in fact, when we were replacing that other cooling unit and I was had the cooling unit up and Ann was filming me, I noticed some rust inside what we call the cat box. Okay, if you watch my other videos, you'll get what the cat box is. It's this, it's this depression inside the, so take your refrigerator, lay it down and take the cooling unit off the back side and there's this depression that looks like a cat, a box. cat box. So that's why we call it a cat box. Um, and so in there you have the low temperature absorber and the high temperature absorber that fits inside there. And um, so it could get, uh, uh, ammonia vaporizes at minus 22 degrees. So it's going to be at least minus 22 degrees in that high temp or low temperature absorber, which is the freezer part. But I have read and seen that it could get down to minus 60, minus 70 degrees. Okay. Minus 22 works for me. Right. That's okay. Cool. Um, so we know that heat is attracted to cold. Okay, so when we put that cooling unit into the cat box, whether it's done at the factory or, you know, we swapped out a cooling unit or, or you had your cooling unit swapped out and you're having these symptoms and that cooling unit is put in, in that other video, not the one where I talk about how heat makes cold, but in the one on, I think it's called tips and tricks on how to swap out a cooling unit. Later towards that video, you're going to see where the cooling unit was put in. I'll pull back that foil and you're going to see some, um, uh, a void. You're going to see a void there where you could look right down inside the side wall of the cat box. Okay, so the cooling unit sitting inside, it's flush with the back of the freezer wall, but there's a void right there. So if that's getting really, really cold inside of there, minus 22, and it's a warm, humid day, then you got your vents. That humidity could work its way into that void and get brought into that minus 22 area and it will start to freeze. 
Okay. And it'll start to build up and build up and build up and build up and build up over about a month. Okay. And so ice freezes at 32 degrees. And so now you have ice and it's acting as an insulator between the minus 22 uh, uh, evaporation that's taking place of the ammonia and the ice. Hold on. There's a big truck passing us by. Okay. Um, my Ford's not that loud. No. Okay. <laughs> I think yours is newer. Yeah, maybe mine's newer. Yeah. So where that ice dam builds up, and what we're going to look at with Jeffrey's refrigerator, we're going to have to pull the whole refrigerator out to see this because it's up against a wall. You want a one-inch clearance behind the back wall, and we just can't get in there. Um, we're going to pull the whole refrigerator out, and we're going to have to look at it. Now, we might not have to pull the whole cooling unit out, but we're going to pull the refrigerator out, and we're going to look to see if there's a void on the side. So all this is to say, about a month, starts to warm up, you let it thaw out for about eight hours, and then it works fine again. What I am thinking we're gonna find here is we're gonna pull the refrigerator out, we're gonna find a void there. Um, it's a Norcold 1200. I think they use like a duct tape, and uh, we've done a lot of Norcold 1200 cooling units. And I've actually seen a lot of voids there. So I'm suspicious if that's not the same problem here. In fact, the pictures that I'm gonna, that I shared with you of the ice, that's off of a Norcold 1200 too, straight from the factory. Love you Norcold, but there's something going on with how you're sealing your edges because humidity is getting in there. Um, I'm just up here in the Northwest and I've seen this so many times where moisture is getting back in there. So the cooling unit's fine. Nothing wrong with the cooling unit. Nothing wrong with any of the controls. It's just that there's a breach and this humid air is working its way in there and building up this layer of ice, separating the, the creating a gap between the minus 22 section and the heat, heat sink. So if you look in your freezer, you're going to have a metal top, metal back wall, metal bottom with like eight screws, it screws it into the, um, the low temperature evaporator part with this heat transfer mastic paste. Go watch the video. I talk about that. And um, so we're not able to get that good heat transfer, okay? Having said all the preamble to what we're about to do, let's get some work done. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, now the first thing I want to do is I've already looked at his refrigerator and with a flashlight, we can look and we can begin to see, I don't know if it'll show up in the camera, but I've actually seen it with my eyes here. And um, you can see some, what looks to be like water dripping marks way up right where the cat box stops in the wall. So I'm gonna to try to see if there's any way I can get the camera to show you that, because I want you to look for that if you're having the same problem as well, okay? So we'll start with that. And then what we'll do with that point, because the refrigerator's been off, so there's, I can't do temperature changes on it. Um, we'll start pulling the refrigerator out and we'll get it out to the floor and we'll pick you up on that side. So, okay, so what I was trying to do Here's my finger. What I was trying to do is get the camera wedged up inside that hole right there, but it's just the tolerances are too tight. But with my eyeball, I can see these water streaks. So we're going to pull the refrigerator forward and then I'll get the camera at that point. Make sense? Yep. Makes sense. Okay, let's get the refrigerator pulled. Now let me show you what we're gonna have to do to get this refrigerator pulled so that if you ever have to do it, it's not that big of a deal. It's six screws about, give or take be two screws on the back side. One is under this little glob of stuff and the other one is under this little glob of stuff like sealant and we're gonna have to turn off the LP and crack the LP line and then we're gonna find where the uh, 12 volt comes in right here so we're gonna disconnect the 12 volt okay disconnect the LP and take off these two screws in the back that's it on the front we're gonna take you inside. There's two screws up in the top, two screws in the bottom. So those six screws are holding this whole refrigerator in place, but we also have to take off the LP and the 12 volts. So I'm going to get some wrenches, take off LP, peel off the sealant, get to those screws, unplug this. I'll probably take a paint pin so I don't have to be smart. I could just match up red to red dot to red dot, and that way I don't have to check polarity. And um, we'll pull the refrigerator forward. Okay. So if, if you're working and it's cold and rainy, um, I kind of came up with this little tip I'll share with you. I've got it in a couple of my other videos, but I don't expect you've watched over 100 videos to find these little nuggets of wisdom. So I'll throw it in this one too. So I discovered this when I had to work on an RV roof and it was raining. And, um, but I still needed to be able to work with screws. So I like these little gloves and I've got links on all the stuff on my Amazon affiliate link. So you put on your MaxFex gloves for all of, what, 10 bucks for a pack of three, okay? Then I get extra large gloves. Guess what Darren's gonna do? What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? Ah, oh, you put it in there, 
Okay, and now what I've just done is my hands are, I've done this because we get a lot of rain up here. And so I'm able to work in the pouring down rain in, in cold, not very cold, but maybe I've done it down to 30 and my hands stay warm, they stay dry. And I've done it for all of a buck and that's like three bucks or so four bucks, I've got a glove. And when, um, now the, the negative of this is sometimes my hands will actually sweat. And so they, um, I take this apart and because they're sweaty, but you know, my big, thick, heavy duty, Carhartt, waterproof, winterproof gloves, I can't work with those, they're too big and bulky. So here's a tip, try it, see if you like it. And uh, I've got links on my Amazon affiliate links for all the gloves and everything like that. But um, this, I can still do intricate little electrical wiring and wire nuts and little screws because my fingers are small and they're staying dry and warm. So just wanted to share that little tip with you. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to, you don't need to watch me do this. You really don't save your time. I'm going to scrape off the putty, take these off, and we're going to pick you up on the inside when we do those two screws on the inside. Okay. And one other tip, <laughs> um, you can still, from at least my phone, I've got a Samsung Note 8. I can still tap the screen with these on. So it's like an extra bonus. You know, I can still, I don't have to take my glove off to touch my screen. So we're on the inside now and I lied. Um, there are these, pop these little covers off and you'll find the screws there. So there's four along the top. Okay, and four along the bottom. So two screws in the back, disconnect your LP line, disconnect your 12 volts, take out the eight screws in the front, and we'll wiggle, 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 and see if we can get her loose. All right, folks, so we've got the refrigerator cooling in it out, um, pan back pretty hard. What I wanna show you is see this streak right here and all these little streaks? Those were the ones I was trying to get to see when it was in its hole. So all these streaks are evidence of, of the ice melting inside of the cat box. And we go all the way across and you see more of the streaks, more of the streaks, more of the streaks. Okay, so what's causing? Let me see if I can get back here in my little hole back here. So now I'm sitting in where the refrigerator is. So there you have, I got a little show and tell here. So it's, it's these streaks that I'm concerned about. Okay, that is a telltale sign that we've had ice dam happening in this refrigerator. So the question I was asking Jeffrey originally was when it thaws out, does he notice water on the back side? And I think that had he known to look, and now you guys know to look, that you would have noticed during that eight hours dethaw, you're, it's gonna be wet. It's gonna start sweating on this back and you might even get some water down here. Now that's not the same water that we have in, in this overflow tube. Now this tube here is the one that goes to, let me get over here, that drip tray on the bottom of the fins in the refrigerator. So when that drip tray in the refrigerator starts to fill up with water, it drips down that tube, the white tube, we're following the white tube, and down it goes in that little tray. They keep it there because that's a warm area and that water should evaporate. You see that mostly on the Norcolds, on the Dometics, they'll put your drip tube outside, okay? Um, now I, there was one more plug I forgot to tell you about. That was the AC plug. Um, so we got the refrigerator loose and then I went back to make sure it was, was loose. So now, okay, a couple other things. This is the duct tape I was telling you about earlier. This is what they do at the factory, okay? So we love you Norcold, but guess what? Your duct tape's not sticking. It's not even sticky on the back side. And so we have all this loose duct tape. Now, let me, let me pan back here. I'll tell you what, here, I'm gonna hand this to you, Jeffrey and just kind of, I'm going to give a little tour here. Um, so see, just follow my hand here. Okay, so this is kind of loose, which is fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to pull this duct tape off and that void I was talking about, I expect to find a void through this duct tape. It goes along the top too. See, it's not even sticking here. So let's just take a peek real quick. Let's see what we find in there. Oh, get, get a shot in there. See that void right there? That's the void we're talking about. So if I'm moist, warm air, this is the coldest part. I'm gonna work my way into that crack right there because this duct tape's not doing much of anything. And all the way across it goes, okay? Um, so there, that's your breach. That's where your moist, warm air is getting right into that little, little spot. Let me get a little putty knife, I'm gonna reach. Right there, okay? So look, my putty knife's sliding right into this void right there. See, that's it, that deep, okay? And um, actually it's even deeper. The whole length of my putty knife just reached right inside. So what we're gonna do to fix this, we're gonna peel this back to gain access. We're gonna get all this duct tape out of here, okay? 
So at this point, there's no reason to pull the cooling in it at all. Um, what we need to do is get the duct tape out of here, peel all this back and get that expandable foam, that great stuff, whatever. I have black, so it's gonna be black when we do it. And we're gonna get in there, we're gonna squirt it in there as good as we can, just really fill that in. And um, we don't even know how bad it is over on this side. Um, let me get a razor blade. Let's see what this side's like. Now the tape we're going to use is the um, HVAC foil tape. Yeah, there's no, there's a big hole here right into the cooling unit. So you could get that big void right in there. Oops, sorry, I just, see, it's, this is the void we're talking about. All the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Okay, so big, huge gap. I mean, I can even see, I think you understand the problem. Okay, and now I think you understand what we're going to do to fix it. So if your refrigerator is doing the same symptoms, let me, I'm blinding you. Um, if your refrigerator is doing the same symptoms as his was, some people might replace their whole cooling unit. Some people might turn the thing upside down and bang on it. Well, we know that that's not going to fix the problem. It might dislodge the, the sodium chromate. And some of the big holes and little holes I was talking about, wait for it. Some of those big holes and little holes I was talking about are uh, this line here. Okay, so this line here is your hydrogen return line. Okay, this little line here, uh, this is where, this is a little bitty hole. This is gonna have liquid ammonia. Let me go brighter on my deal. This one's gonna have liquid ammonia and a hydrogen gas. It's gonna go through, but see how small that tube is? Now you're gonna come down here, see how big this tube is? It's the same tube. So something happens between the small tube and the big tube, and that happens as it comes down, and I think it happens right in this area, it goes from a small high pressure to a large low pressure, and when you have that pressure change, you have rapid evaporation. And that ammonia is evaporating because it's like, uh, I think the analogy I gave in my other video is like the pressure cooker on your stove. High pressure inside that pot, comes out the tip little thing on the top, psh, 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 and it goes to a low pressure, which is your kitchen, and all that yummy stinkness is filling up the room with all your yumminess. Um, pro tip, um, I think I may have won my wife this way. Anne, tell me if I'm correct or not. Great date idea is um, to make beef stew on a pressure cooker, see? So the brilliant idea then is you get to go to the store with your, your date, and you get to find out what kind of food they like. And then you go home and then it's the whole thing in the kitchen where you're slicing and dicing and you put it in a pressure cooker and you can't go wrong with a pressure cooked beef stew because that, anyway, okay, enough on that. But I think I, I made beef stew for Anne one time. <laughs> anyway, so I use the pressure cooker analogy because that's a high pressure going to a low pressure evaporation taking place. And, uh, and then you get a nice meal afterwards. And, um, so then it goes in here, drops down to here. I'm not going to tell this story because I've got a whole video where I go into it and, I, and just go watch. If you're interested in where all these tubes are, how they work, what they do, um, then go watch that video that I linked to earlier on how heat makes cold. And all of your questions on all these tubes, I've addressed pretty much all of them. Like, why does this tube come back into the top? Well, because that's the water and ammonia absorbs into water. It's got to do that. Steam's coming up, water's going down. Anyway, this video is about the ice dam. So turning this upside down would not have fixed it. Um, so now that you understand what is going on with this one, we're gonna try to fix it without pulling this cooling unit off. We won't know we've succeeded for a month or maybe at least two weeks. So that's kind of scary, but we obviously have all the telltale signs here and um, that, that that's what's been going on. Um, now, I know I'm going to get this question. Why don't you pull the cooling unit anyway to make sure it's right? I don't want to pull the cooling unit because when the refrigerator is working, it is working, right? That's correct. That's correct. So if the refrigerator is working when it's working, that means that mastic heat transfer paste is still intact. That part's fine. There's no reason to breach this, to take it apart, to put new mastic back down. Um, so because of that reason alone, I don't want to go into the time, the cost, the expense, the higher invoice, everything, just to pull this thing off to put it back on again. Um, so we're just going to fill the void and put the foil tape on it. 
and see how it works a month from now. I'm of the opinion, now that we've seen this breach, I think we've figured out what's wrong with this refrigerator. And now you understand that moist, humid air working its way into a very, very cold spot is going to create ice. And the pictures that we threw up of ice, we're not going to find ice in this. The only way to have seen ice is to pull it out. And um, so the telltale sign that yours is doing an ice dam is the degra degradation of the performance of the cooling. And also look on the back and you'll see these water streaks. Okay. And then if you go to the point that we just did, you'll see these voids in the side all the way around, I'm sure. So the fix is to fill those in, cover it over with foil tape and bada bing, bada boom, Bob's your uncle. We throw the thing back in here and see you in a month. Hopefully not, unless we're going to do beef stew. <laughs> I don't know, I'm happily married. I'm not going to make beef stew. My days of making beef stew are over, unless it's for her. Um, although, on uh, I love to cook, and on all recipes, okay, if you like beef stroganoff, I'll throw this one out too. There's a recipe called Boyfriend Bait Beef Stroganoff. Oh my, that definitely. Be <laughs> Boyfriend Bait Beef Stroganoff. It's the funniest name, but we had some some kind of beef and some noodles and, and my wife and I decided, well, hey, let's, let's try this one. It was the best. It would have, it would have hooked me <laughs> anyway. So, um, so at this point, we're going to pause for a second. We'll get some work done. We'll bring you back over when we've got the tape peeled off and we'll show you the voids here and then we'll, we'll maybe videotape me squirting the stuff in there. Okay. All right, so here's where we are right now. We've laid the refrigerator down. I'd recommend doing that. You're going to be able to, you know, it's not like a workbench right now. Or as my son would say, it's a, what is it? A, um, oh, what's that Minecraft word? Ah, there's a Minecraft thing. Uh, whatever. Okay. And um, see, now I'm stuck with that word. <laughs> Carrying on. Um, so we've cut out some of the, the their, their backing here. And then we're going to, this is the foil tape we're going to finish it off with. We're going to roll the foil tape around the whole thing. And uh, so I've got the great stuff. I stock black as an RV technician because a lot of times this is gonna be something I'm gonna use underneath the RV and underneath RVs is black, so I just stock black. And uh, a roll of paper towels, definitely use your gloves on this stuff because this does not come off of skin for seven days. Don't ask me how I know that. Okay. Um, well, you can ask, but I won't tell. So we've been shaking this can, shaking this can and uh, so the, the trick here, no big, no big deal. I'm going to force this stuff into these voids. All right, paper towels blocking my view. All right. There it goes. And I'm, it, it's slow as smooth and smooth as fast. I'm just going to work my way around. Um, it's not a race. I want to make sure that this is really, really in there. Um, now, if it turns out that we have to replace this cooling unit, and we have to fight this stuff out. Okay, no problem. You just fight it to get it out. Embrace the suck, if you've heard me say many times. Okay. So I'm forcing the straw into that foam and really getting this in there because we know that that's what was the problem. Okay, now I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to wait for it to dry. In about 20 minutes, I'll pick it up. So I'm not being lazy. I just know this stuff too well. Okay, so I'm going to stop on this corner. Okay, so before this starts to really expand a lot, I want to get my tape on it. Okay. Are we even coming out? There we go. All right. I wasn't convinced that got in there. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to take a wide piece. Because this stuff's going to start to expand and I want to make sure that it's pressed down.
So if you've watched me do that one, I don't think you need to watch me do the other three sides, but that's what we're doing to make this repair. Um, we'll show it to you when we're done, but right now I'm just making sure this is nice and sealed. So we know we've got this side fixed, okay? So now, yeah, save yourself some bandwidth. What I'm gonna do next is work along the top, put my tape, work along the side, put my tape, work along the bottom, put my tape. I'll probably start at the bottom first because I don't have to lean over this stuff. And um, so we'll, and I've got it on me, so that's why you would have gloves. So um, that's the fix for this. And um, so we're gonna put the tape down and then we'll pick you up on the other side and, and, re and review all that we've done. Okay. So we've worked our way all the way around. We've forced that straw into the voids and squirted it until we saw it oozing out, scooped off all the excess that squirted out and we put all the tape down. I've since changed gloves and I got it on me. And um, yeah, that stuff's hateful, so just take it easy. And uh, so now we've got all the foil tape all the way around. Um, so we have resecured the cat box, this, this area here, this is the, the cooling unit. And if you take this out, I guess it's like three or four inches. And if you took this out, it'd be like a big hole. We call it the cat box. Um, uh, while we're here, these are your fans. This is the perfect spot for your fans. Over here, you have your fan thermostat. Um, if your are, if your refrigerator is in a slide room, you really must have fans. And I've got another video. I'll make a link on that one where I draw a nice groovy picture on how the cooling unit is supposed to work. So I've moved to the other side. And so this is the hole the refrigerator goes in. So this would be the flashing that is going to mount on top. It's acceptable, but it would not be my preferred way to do it. We've got another, another refrigerator video um, where we install a for flashing inside of a refrigerator. And... Um, but this is totally acceptable. The thing I do not like about this flashing is if I'm heat and I'm working it up and I go through that condenser fin at the top where I just showed you where that uh, fan thermostat was, that's the condenser fin. The goal is, to, those fans are aiming at that. The goal is to get the air through those to drop the temperature of the water to get the water out and get me ammonia left. And um, so I would like this to kind of curve down. In other words, the air's coming up. They got a nice baffle right here. I like this, okay? This should touch just the bottom of the condenser fin. But I would like this, instead of going over the top of the refrigerator, I'd like it to kind of curve and maybe tuck just behind the condenser fins. It's acceptable, but if you watch my drawing, uh, if, if you watch my video with the drawing, I'll make a link to that. And then we've got another refrigerator video where I actually created one of these on the site that's a much better way. And, and really what you're doing is be the air. Visualize the air. Anywhere you're going to have a hiccup, you know, where it, it could work its way on top of that refrigerator, that's going to create some turbulence in the air. Um, you, you don't want that. That's what you're trying to avoid. You want it to be a nice, slippery chimney. Nice, slippery chimney. Um, totally acceptable. I'm glad they did this. But better would have been to, to bend it behind. Um, so here we have, we want zero clearance on the sides. And they've done a great job with that and we want less than a one inch gap behind the back wall. And uh, we wanna force that air into this hole right here, which is this bottom hole, force it through the fans, and we really, really wanna get it through those condenser fins and then out. It's all about getting the air through those condenser fins. If you're not getting the air through those condenser fins, then you will have refrigerator performance issues. That's a statement, that's not a, well, you might. No, you will. Um, and so we've done a lot of jobs where that upper, vent this one here like they, this manufacturer put a baffle in thank you but a lot of them it'll just you take off that top vent and it's just wide open right here and your refrigerator man your, your refrigerator may be working but it is not working as best as it can and if you look at your refrigerator installation manual it'll tell you to create a baffle to force the air through these fins and out. Okay, so enough on that. We've got other videos that cover that. But since we had this specimen here, oh, and crafting table. That was what I was trying to think of before. So here we have our, our crafting table. Uh, nod to my son who likes Minecraft. And uh, so at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise it up, perch it on the back thing here, and wiggle, 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 and get it back into the hole here. And then, um, these are where the screw holes go, four on the top, four on the bottom, reconnect everything and, um, and, and give it our, our best shot. So when we're done, we'll 
show you this all in and working. And then at that point, we'll wrap up our video with some final tips and tricks to share with you. Hey, well, here we are where we began. Uh, we've pulled the refrigerator out. We've taped it all up, put it back in. We've tested for LP leaks. We've made sure that it works on both AC and electric. And um, so if this video added value to you in trying to help you troubleshoot what's going on with your refrigerator, um, when the cooling unit's working and all the stuff we said at the beginning, we don't need to recap that, then um, hey, give us a thumb up, subscribe to our channel, share it with your friends. And um, we always end the video by saying, happy campers, say my RV works. Excellent, yay. Okay, see you guys next time, happy camping.